You're on. Hi guys, I am here with your Monday Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. There's a lot of things I was talking to you guys about because I tried to make this video video earlier, right before this one, and we used a bigger chip thinking it would record longer, but yet it recorded 10 minutes shorter. So it cut me off. So I'm having to do it again. Now my battery's dying, so I'm just going to get into the Bible reading. All right. We're going to start with 2 Timothy today. We'll be reading 2 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son. Remember, Paul calls Timothy's son because Timothy's a lot younger than Paul, so Paul thinks of him as a son. It's not his real son. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gifts of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, whom has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, who lives in us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord show mercy to the household of one Sephorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. All right, guys, and that was 2 Timothy chapter 1. Oh my God, I'm going to chew it up. Start out of the mint. It's mint toast gum. I really like it. Love it. All right. And Psalm 90 and 91. We're reading two Psalms today. We're in the book of Psalms that goes from Psalms 90 to 106. The first one will be a prayer of Moses, the man of God. 
Lord. You have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, where you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our inequities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And that was Psalm 90. That was a prayer of Moses, the man of God. You can learn a lot more about Moses by reading the very second book of the Bible, the Old Testament, Exodus. A lot about Moses in Exodus. That's where it talks about the plagues and God freeing the Hebrews from the land of Egypt through Moses and Aaron. And our last psalm today is Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, The Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra, you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will sustain him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. All right, guys, and that was Psalm 91. And now we're ending today's Bible reading, Monday's Bible reading, with Proverbs chapter 26, verses 1 and 2. Like snow in summer, or rain in harvest, honor is not fitting for a fool. 
like a fluttering sparrow or a darking swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading for today, Monday, October 22nd, 2018. Let me get out our prayer request. Please keep the following people in prayer. April Thacker and her mom, Linda Thacker, and Linda's husband, April's dad. Sherman Crabtree, Barb Post, Michelle Watkins, Jimmy Myers, my nephew. I heard he finally got to go to the doctor and, well, a little clinic, and they gave him like three prescriptions. One was antibiotics. And that's all I heard. Mindy Gallimore, Cindy and Jim Welsh, my friend Tabitha, Dora Carper, Kathy Butterball, Ramona Henry, Judy Osborne, she has stage four cancer, Joe Osborne, Rob Ashmore, Rhonda Karshner, Abby Myers, sorry, Randy Post, Jody McWhorter and their girls, Melody Ramey, Gabe Toby, Kaylee Ramey, Kinsley and Olson Osborne, Michelle Turner, Cohen Richmond, Elizabeth Jeffries, and her health aide, Zach. Zach does have cancer. He's going to be starting treatment soon. I did get an update on him. All right, guys, that was everything for our Monday Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. I'll see you guys again soon with another Bible meeting. Bye, guys. God bless.